everyone, and welcome back to Brought to the Table, a podcast dedicated to bringing someone's unique perspectives and ideas to the table. I am your host, Luke Jones, and today I am joined by my wonderful friend, Noah Furness. Noah, how are you doing, friend? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm ready to uh, share my unique perspective. Yes. Um, so for those of you who do not know, I won't, I won't go too much in the backstory, but, uh, so Noah actually used to be one of my students. He now technically works for me a little bit, but, uh, no, Noah has been a good friend of mine kind of ever since I kind of started, uh, teaching and now we're kind of, now we're kind of like close friends and he actually got me interested into the topic that we're going to be talking about today, which I'm very excited about. Um, thank you for joining me on today's show. I appreciate it. No, yeah, thanks for having me. I, I'm very excited that you're very excited about something I introduced you to. I know, yeah, you actually did introduce to me to this. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have randomly one night at 10 o'clock booted <laughs> up uh, Amazon Video and voila. Uh, we're we're going to be talking about the boys on today's episode of Brought to the Table. Um, it's a very It's a very interesting show. Noah, would you like to explain to the audience what the boys is? Oh, okay. So a high level overview. Uh, no, I'm going to go low. So what The Boys is, is it's a satirical sort of parody look at a realistic way superheroes might be introduced and maintained in an actual realistic world. It's kind of like Game of Thrones mixed in with Marvel and DC mixed in with like Mad Men. I think it's a I think that's actually a really good description of that specifically with all those ideas together. Although yeah. I've not I've only seen a few episodes of Game of Thrones, but like I've seen a lot of Mad Men and definitely there's a lot of Mad Men vibes in this show for sure. Yeah. Which I really yeah, yeah. enjoy. Um so no, I gotta ask, so what got you into want, want, wanting to watch this to begin with? I gotta ask. Boredom. Oh my gosh, I'm so bored during COVID. If I'm not hanging <laughs> out with one of my friends, I've played all what how many do i have i think i have like 146 games on my computer now i've played mm. all of them and i've sort of worn myself out on them you know thank god that epic is giving us two or three new games every month so i can at least entertain myself that way but one day i was just looking at my roku tv browsing around i looked at netflix was like uh eh. I know what I'm going to watch if I open up Netflix. It's going to be The Office. Exactly. Looked at Hulu. I was like, eh. I know I'm going to watch Eric Andre if I open up Hulu. And then I saw Amazon Prime. And I have Amazon Prime because I'm a student. And every student should have Amazon Prime because you save a ton of money when you're a student. Exactly. But looked at it and I was like, I don't think I've ever watched anything on Amazon Prime. And a few of... The YouTubers that I frequent, uh, Michael Reeves, he actually made an entire video dedicated to like an advertisement for the show. And I love Michael Reeves and anything he likes, I, I'll probably like because we're very similar, I would think. But uh, he made he made a video about it. So I knew what the boys was. Uh, and I started watching like two days before season two came out and watched the first episode and watched what was it there's like seven episodes there's like eight episodes i think it's season. like eight a season i think yeah watched the first episode uh that first night and then spent the entirety of the next day doing homework and watching the boys all the way through season season one in one day which every episode is like an hour hour ten minutes so spending pretty much the entire day doing nothing but watching the show and fell in love pretty much before the end of the first episode. I am all about superheroes and I don't like Marvel. I don't like the Marvel cinematic universe. And if you don't like the Marvel cinematic universe or any of these cinematic universe, comic book malarkey con concoctions, you'll love the boys. Because the boys thrives on making fun and satirizing that whole shtick. Anything Marvel cin cinematically, they they run it through the ground, dude. They very obviously it's very hard to watch the show 
and not get this idea that what Marvel and what DC have been doing to not only cinema, but like pop culture and social media and the culture at large is not only destructive and unhealthy, but is just outwardly evil. That's what's interesting about the show, because like um, part of like uh, what Noah was talking about with like um, the realistic take on it, like part of it is like there's like this core group of superheroes, which are basically trying to look, make them look like the Avengers or the Justice League. Yeah. And they're basically part of a company. And part of when they are part of the company is they have to like do like movies and ads and like stuff like that, where it's like they're they're basically being treated as like toys like you even see it at a few points in the show where there's actually like action figures of the characters and like it's really crazy to think about like because they show it off in a way now granted marvel and dc is very different because you know they're we're, we're watching them from like the movie experience but they're like treating them as like normal heroes to some extent but like here since it's a more realistic take it's just like it's really kind of creepy to think about looking like uh, looking at yourself as an action figure you know what I mean? And like realizing that's part of your your persona. You know, it's like I you never think about any of the Star Wars actors when they made the action figures of the Star Wars characters. Like, do you think they ever take a look at themselves as an action figure and be like, oh crap, I'm a toy? You know, like I I people want to buy my basically my likeness as a toy. You know, yeah. it's it's weird. Yeah. To think about it. So so I wanna go, I wanna I wanna give sort of a beginner's guide to this show for the people who haven't seen it so this show starts out uh with a scene where you see Maeve who is the parody stand-in for Wonder Woman uh stopping an armored vehicle that was stolen by some bank robbers and she like she busts through a car it's all stylized and looks cool like you would see in any DC movie and then she starts beating up the robbers, of course, and then Superman shows up and he stops one of the bad guys from assassinating some kid or and then he just like openly brutalized, brutalizes and murders one of the robbers without even like blinking an eye and all the bystanders and like there's even kids who are bystanders just act like, you know. Superman throwing this this human person 1200 yards into the air only to collapse onto a car and die instantly is completely normal. And so the show follows this group of guys. Go figure, it's called The Boys. Yeah, it's called this The Boys. Group of normal guys, normal human people who have been wronged in some way by Vought, who is this company, this conglomerate that owns, uh, yeah, they own these superheroes. So the superheroes are no longer people, they are commodities, and they actually go really in-depth on defining what that means in Season 2, which I think is really interesting. Uh, Very interesting. And to talk about. But uh, Vought uh, is doing some shady stuff, obviously, and the boys know that of some of the shady stuff. So their goal is to sort of dry out or air out this company's dirty laundry. So the masses stop praising bot and start fearing them like they should be. Yeah. I, um, I think it's a really good, that's a good description. Cause like the, the story essentially starts off with one of the main, I, and that's what's interesting about this too, is I don't really think there's a main character. Like, there's the main group, but I don't think there's a main character. Like, you can kind of, like, you can point at maybe two of them, but, like, there's really not. Um, because, I would say um, we, see, we see the story from multiple perspectives. Right. I wouldn't say, yeah, I, I would agree. I wouldn't say that there is a solid main character, because usually when there's a main character, it's very clearly defined. Like, you're supposed to see the story from this person's point of view. But, I mean, other than, so... I would say if there is a main character, it would be Huey. Yeah, but I was gonna say Huey would be the yeah Huey and Butcher specifically. Huey, Huey Butcher, and maybe Starlight. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, oh, she's oh, a I huge, would say yeah. Only recently might she be considered one of the main characters. 
But yeah, there are there's an entire cast of characters that you follow routinely. Even the bad guys, sometimes you see the story from their point of view to try and understand where they're coming from. Like, you start off thinking Maeve is a bad person that only cares about herself, and then in season in the later half of season one and most of season two, you see you know anything that that deals with her, you see that from her point. Of view. You don't see it from the company's point of view. You don't see it from her girlfriend's point of view. You don't see it from, uh, I, I would say, Stormfront's point of view, because I guess that's the only other person she really interacts with in season two. Yeah. Um, but you do jump around perspectives, and it the show tries to humanize the bad guys because the good guys in the show are definitely not good guys. I would say every character in some way or form is an anti-hero. Even even uh, Starlight, who is this goody two-shoes, like, I just want to save people. She's killing innocent people and doing what she needs to do by the end of the second season for the sake of the group. Right? So she's not a good guy, you know, inherently at that point anymore towards the end of season two. Yeah, and I, I think what and I think what the show does it's what you you brought up the whole perspectives thing and what I think uh I think what the show does really well compared to a lot of other shows is that each of these characters has like a side story. So like like and they're all prominent within the main story in some shape or form. And when you switch between the different perspectives, the show does a really good job of really kind of talking about all those in detail where you actually care about all the different characters and the stories that's going on. Because it's a very typical thing in like any TV show or even sometimes movies where essentially there's like maybe one or two side stories going on in an episode or maybe throughout like a season or something like that. But here, like each side story is treated with some type of prominence and meaning throughout the entirety of the story that even something that you first time seeing it might not think is super important and ends up being like very important towards the end. Like um, we haven't talked about the Aquaman clone, The Deep. And how his whole side story, I think, is one of the funniest things ever. Just from I West. hated that side story. That side story made me so uncomfortable. Like, oh, it's so I, uncomfortable and it's hilarious. I hated it, but that's obviously the sort of reaction they were going for. They wanted right. to gross you out by, you know, making the gills look as like making Aquaman's yeah. gills look as gross as you know. They possibly yeah. could. So, yeah. And, yeah, but I, full I absolutely love that yeah. his gills were voiced by Pat Oswalt. Oh no, he, that was fantastic. He uh, is my favorite. I love the duet when they were singing together while he was tripping off mushrooms. Oh, that was so funny. If you haven't seen the so episode, great. I probably sound insane, but that was probably one of the greatest and worst side stories out of the whole show so far and it's well, it, it is so integral cool. and it builds on the deep story and explains why he's at where he's at yeah he completely loses all sense of self during his backstory which is integral to sort of explain why he just does whatever he's told at that point with the goal of getting back into the seven so like um so to, to explain the deep thing so so the story with him is so in the first episode, he essentially um, sexually he rapes, assaults. Yeah, or, he yeah. He, he is it? Did he rape her? Is that what he did? I would I would coin it as I, I assume there's some type of sexual assault on Starlight, which is uh, Annie. The, that's also her normal name, and because Annie, she's the newest member of the of the Seven, which is like I said, the Justice League. And what happens is that. Um, he basically, there's a, there's a stunt that Annie performs at some rally thing where she basically calls him out, but not directly. And everyone knows it's him. So they basically tell him to go on leave. And he basically goes on this journey of trying to figure out why he does this to women. And the, they find the whole thing with the gills is he finds out that he doesn't feel comfortable in his own body because he has gills. Cause his whole gimmick is that he's essentially Aquaman. Um, he can talk to fish and he can breathe underwater and all that stuff. And like, I just find, and he's basically going on this like religious cult experience. This is the best way to describe it, I guess. Um, very, very much so. Yeah. Joins Scientology, goes the whole nine yards of Scientology and then gets screwed over by them. 
and yep. he's so brainwashed he doesn't even know it. Right, exactly. And it, it's funny too because I mean, uh, you know, we both come from the Midwest, and this is a very common thing that you will find out here. Um, and that's where, like, as he goes to, I forget exactly where in Ohio, but it's close to Toledo. Um, but it's like they do the whole Fresca oh. joke constantly, and I think that's hilarious. Um, yeah, yeah, he went to Ohio. Uh, he was coerced into Scientology through Fresca, which is hilarious if you're from the Midwest, because I think only people from the Midwest know yeah. what Fresca is. It, it's essentially it's essentially the diet version of Seven Up. That's essentially what it is. It's the better version of Seven Up, if we're being honest, though. I was gonna say I agree with you on that statement. I'm not a big Seven Up person, but I agree. Um, <laughs> uh, I drank. My mom used to be a big Fresca drinker back in my youth, so I've had plenty of Fresca in my day. Yeah, um, same here. Same yeah, here. but uh, but yeah, but it, like, so we're talking about just like one story, and like definitely the deeps is probably the most sidiest of all the side stories. Like, yeah, he probably has the least amount of impact on the total main story that's going on. I think yeah. he interacts with the boys once in the yes. entire show so far, and he didn't even really do anything. No. Yeah, and no, because uh, I don't know how spoilerly we're going to get. We didn't do, no, it's full we spoilers. Should, hey, we should if, probably if, do a spoiler warning at this point. Because, I mean, like, this whole episode is basically us kind of talking about, like, what? Because I'm um, full disclosure, like, I am not a big TV person, and. I I don't normally binge stuff and the boys as soon as I started watching it I jammed on it and I absolutely adore this show. This is my absolute new favorite TV series of all time. Before that it was Wilfred um and I I like darker TV shows. Um and I'm also a huge fan of The Office too. But like this just got me in a way that I don't know if maybe it's cuz of, of a 2020 but like this TV show is just outstanding on so many different fronts. And I think a lot of that has to do with the, the elements, the story brings out, um, Definitely and the, the, the different themes it talks well. about. It's just so good. Yeah. I, I would say it's, it's definitely the, it's the most competently written story I've watched on TV in a long time. And maybe, maybe I'm just watching the wrong shows or maybe I yeah. haven't been shown the right stuff, but, when it comes to a coherent story that's not only complex but simple and is easy to follow and you know you can jump in and out like i i've been rewatching episodes and noticing things that i didn't notice before and making the show make more sense i love this show and i can't remember the last time i liked a show so much it was probably when i first watched the office on netflix because I remember watching it when it was live, but I never really yeah. watched it until it was on Netflix. But yeah, no, I this this is definitely a show for people who are, I would say, more cynical in nature. This definitely appeals to a cynical cynical person sort of point of view about this particular subject. Because uh, especially because, like, I would say, kind of a running theme of the entirety of the show is shit happens. And shit like, happens and there's nothing you can do about it exactly like there's nothing you can do about it like sometimes it's not even necessarily someone did something wrong it's just something happens and you just have to deal with it and it's the it's the kind of the processing of you dealing with those emotions which is kind of a lot of uh huey in season one where he's you know part of his backstory is he joins the boys because his lover at the time basically got was a bystander in and then got like murdered by the flash clone of this show because he just ran straight through her and just disembodied her and he's just like and like they just treat it like nothing happened and he's just incredibly upset by that because they basically just treat her life as if it's nothing so but like that's the thing is all these different characters involved with that team had something like that happen where essentially someone that they cared about or something or just something meaningful to them just got was a bystander in something that these heroes were doing. And sometimes it was something mean that the heroes were already doing because there's lots of shady stuff that goes on in the show. <laughs> Tons. Yeah. Of no. The, so. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I think. I think this show speaks a lot towards people who are 
who who are seeing what Marvel is doing to like their family or like their friends and is right. like getting getting people to talk about what is essentially potato chip TV but you know Marvel is pulling in more money than any other any any other movie group I think in in, in this yeah, I agree. year and with you know Disney being the overlords of media that they are they're gonna milk it until people stop watching it and so i think vaught is sort of a stand-in for disney in this case because vaught just seems so all-powerful you know in season two they get acquired by the government to right. fight in wars which you know is not a direct comparison because we don't have Disney sending soldiers overseas. Yeah, we don't have Mickey Mouse going out out to war. We don't have that. But I don't know what the metric is. But they Disney owns like a pretty large percentage of the total amount of media that's able to be consumed. I was gonna say I think someone I no one's ever admitted it, but I'm pretty sure they have a monopoly in the entertainment uh, industry. I'm pretty sure they they have. They have an unofficial monopoly. They are right. so big that they can't fail even if they tried. Because they have those diehards that go to Disneyland every year. And they have those families that watch movies just because they're Disney. Because that's what their kids like. And the thing is, like, you know, you can't give Disney too much crap. Because, like, they do make good stuff. You know, like, They used people, to. Well, they used to. The, 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 that is also true. Um... But, but uh, it, what, what's mean, something good they've made lately? They're just doing remakes now, like live action. Well, okay, remakes. I was gonna say the remake stuff, definitely for sure. Um, we like, don't. I, I can't. I, I, I think can't even like throw this out of my brain. If we're being honest, it's I, I it's yeah. You know. Anyways, let's go. Let's go back to the yeah. voice. Yeah, back, I am back not, on top. We're gonna sit here and just <laughs> crap all over Disney for the next thirty minutes. I, I am um, not well equipped to have a discussion about Disney. No, yeah, <laughs> but uh. Anyway, yeah. So like, I agree because like that's the whole the whole thing with the the government buying Vought was like, it's it's the whole thing of Disney owns that giant market share in media, and when the and like how they keep buying out these different entertainment you know licenses. Whether you know they bought Marvel way back when Marvel was about to go bankrupt, and then they bought Star Wars, which was a huge deal, and then they bought Fox, which now I mean like. I mean, people talk about, oh, that means they have the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Well, it's not just that. They own, like, almost every single animated Fox property, which includes, like, The, the Simpsons, Simpsons yeah, Family Bob's Guy, Burgers. Bob's Burgers. Um, anything under that umbrella, they essentially have some ownership in. They also technically own the stuff, the, the rights to, like, Alien vs. Predator. Um, the, that stuff, like, all of that under that umbrella. And they own the... Not Avatar The Last Airbender, but the Avatar, you know, the big 3D movie that came out, what, 2010? The James Cameron one. Yeah, the James Cameron one. Yeah, they like they own all of that. And that's what Vought's trying to do. And then, like, with some of the stuff that they show off, they're basically saying, like, Vought just doesn't care. You know, like, they, even though they they got the okay from the from the military, they're still bigger than the military, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, they're huge. Um. But um, I want to talk about. Go for it. What are we talking about? The last episode of season two. Okay. I want you to tell me how you feel about it. How did I feel? Oh uh, yeah. What? Well, I'm oh, walking away you, from you watching that episode. Talk about this. Um, it was. What was going there, through your mind? My my brain was racing the whole way through because like so. Essentially, what's going on is that they're, they're, you know, without going too much, we're going full spoiler mode, but to talk about one of the characters, um, you know, Stormfront, uh, basically, she's become the new hotshot hero that's replacing the Deep while he's away. Or no, not the Deep, uh, the invisible guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Translucent. And what happens, though, is you find out that she's actually basically an ageless hero. And she actually was a Nazi. And she's trying to basically convert, you know, her feelings of, you know, Nazism back in the 1940s 
onto these new people. We won't go super into that on the show because that's not necessarily what we, I want to talk about today. But she basically, you know, people find out that she was part of that and she's pissed because that basically ruins her public image because a common thing in the show also is like people have blackmail on each other to ruin each other's public image. Um, that's a, a, com a constant running thing. And essentially what happens is that uh, one of the other main characters, Butcher, who is one of the boys, is basically trying to get back with his wife that was taken away from him. And um, that whole scene almost destroyed me. I'm not going to lie. Um, and you know what I'm talking about. Because um, essentially, uh, once Butcher basically has found his wife within, like, what, the span of a week, like, reunited with her? Yeah. And then she's dead. In the worst way possible. Yeah, no, so the whole thing that happened with Butcher, so I I, I pity Butcher in yeah, any possible it way sucks. I can. It's, Butcher had pretty much the worst, the, the worst storyline in terms of how dark it got, uh, because the season two opens with, uh, he just found his wife, and then before season three ends, we, you know, we see that he made it back to his wife after, you know, he had originally got confirmation that she was alive. Not only did he get reunited with her, found out that she has a son and tries to plot an escape route with them. And she says she doesn't want to leave because she knows that Butcher is going to try and get rid of her son. So right. he gets denied from his wife. Like his wife says, no, I'm not going with you. I'm staying here. Which is awful in its, out in, in its you know, entirety. Yeah, it's all, yeah. But not only that, he tries to prove himself by saving. He, he, he plots with his wife again at the later half of the season to save uh, her kid. And... A whole bunch of confusing things, if you haven't seen the, the show. A whole bunch of confusing things happen, and it ends up with, you know, he and his wife are about to escape with the son, and Stormfront confronts them. The son starts freaking out and kills both his mom in front of Butcher and Stormfront. Right. Yeah, because if you don't know, so the thing is, the one of the main superheroes, Homelander, which is essentially Superman, basically... Uh, you he, know, he he raped, uh, yeah. Butcher's, Butcher's yeah, wife. and that's why. And this kid, and the kid has got the he's got the genes of home Homelander's front. son. Yeah. yeah, Homelander. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that's why. And basically, does like Superman eye lasers too because he's angry as hell because he's watching his mom, you know, about to be choked to death, and he just blasts them both. Um, cause I mean, he's a kid, he's eight years old. He doesn't know how to use his powers. And, but the, the thing is like, you know, to butcher number one, that's not his son, but that kid basically killed his wife, you know? And like it, the, the, cause you can, you know, one of the things that really got to me in that scene too, is that when after, after, um, you know, he reflects and watches her pass, he picks up his signature crowbar and you first think he's about to just murder the kid. And then all I of a sudden I fully expected him to yeah. at least attack at least attack right. the kid. I don't I didn't know if he could kill him because no. he seems pretty right. indestructible at this point. Right. But then but like Homelander comes in him. and basically he's like, Hey, come back with me, son. And then Butcher's like, No. And like he stands in front of the kid and he's just like, I know I might get brutalized right here, but I'm fine because I because the thing is his wife was like you gotta make a promise to me that you'll protect you'll protect the boy, um and he says and like you know he probably was not going to but then he's like no I have a purpose I I have to I have to keep my promise, um and luckily butcher doesn't die thank God because I would have lost it, um <laughs> but but yeah no that that scene was incredibly powerful because it's just like you know butcher had to go through like a hundred different emotions within like a like a few minutes and it's just like you know you can tell that that he and i think something else that the i mean granted they show this more with huey in season one but like i'm definitely excited for season three because they're definitely going to go through like the 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 trauma that butcher just dealt with in that moment you know like because that was kind of what huey's thing was in season one where he's dealing with the trauma of losing his girlfriend he, I think 
that'll be interesting to see because Butcher's been dealing with this for a lot longer a period of time because he's been separated from his wife for like eight years thinking she's dead and like thinking this whole other thing. And now it's like all came to a front and now it's just, he has to deal with those emotions. And we kind of see that towards the end of the last episode, but not like I would say to the full extent that we're probably going to see in the next season. Yeah, no, so my thoughts at the end of, of episode of, of the season two, my thoughts at the end of season two, uh, I, I, I did not like how they used, uh, the, the girl from the experimental hospital that Stormfront ran, you know, that, that, uh, that yeah, girl that I know what you're talking like, about. Everything. I, I, I totally fell for the bait because she was a red herring for the, the head popper girl. Yeah, I knew we were going to talk about Running this. around assassinating people. So I didn't expect that, but here's what I think is going to happen. And here's how I feel because I feel like, so the, at the end of, at the end of the season two, the boys are split up. Uh, Mother's Milk is back. Uh, going, He's going back with his family. I'm not sure if we'll see him again because pretty much all he talked about was wanting to get back with his family. Not sure if there's anything that could split them apart at this point. Right. Frenchie, you know, he was forgiven from everybody because he redeemed himself. And uh, it seems like Butcher's pretty set on helping out, uh, if not raising the kid with what's her name uh at the very least protecting yeah yeah i know what you're talking about yeah because that's the thing too is like um you you think for a second that butcher's gonna raise the kid but then he basically is like i can't do this and he's like all right you're just gonna go back with the government and be raised that way you know because he's like i just can't do it i'm not gonna be a good father figure for you you know like that it's i won't say it on the podcast but he says one of his signature words and the kid says it back <laughs> And, uh, and I'm just like, yeah, he, he's not a good person. Yeah. He's not a good person at all. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, for those of you who have watched it, you got, you know what we're talking about, but, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's the thing. Cause I'm, I'm curious where, he, uh, where Butcher's going to land at the start of season three. I really don't know where he's going to land. And I, cause you got to imagine he does not know what he's going to do with his life right now. Cause like his, his vengeance track is kind of over. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It really he's, is. He's sort of in it for the sport at this point. At the very least, until somebody starts threatening his kid or if somebody steals his kid back, which is entirely likely with Homelander. Right. Which I assume that will be part of the plot of season three. Because part, part, part of the plot of season two is Homelander is like trying to, you know, become this father figure. And because he, he he likes the fact knowing that he has a son that's got his genes and all that stuff. But like he I mean, like he wasn't raising this kid for eight years. He just randomly appears and he's like trying to use the fact that he's this big, you know, figurehead in the world of basically being the most powerful human being. And that doesn't work because there's the scene where he basically takes his son to like an amusement park or something like that. And his son starts freaking out because his son's never been around so many people. And he's just like. Well, you should just be able to do it. And he just doesn't know how to respond. Yeah. He doesn't know how to react. No, so, so here's my conspiracy theory for what might happen in season three. And I, I want, I want you to comment. Okay. On, All on right. My theory. So season two, the very last scene we see is Homelander masturbating on a, <laughs> on a skyscraper. Screaming. One of my favorite scenes, by the way. One of and, my favorite scenes. He's screaming at the top of his lungs. I can do whatever the F I want. And, 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 you know, I was thinking about what that means. He can do whatever he wants because for the longest, for the, for this entire show, he's been trying to build Vought up, get Vought into the military. Uh, that's been his main goal is to get Vought into the military. Now Vought's in the military and nothing's really come of it. You know, right. he's, he's sort of, He's sort of at this point where, like, I don't know if Vought has anything else to really offer him. I don't know if Vought really had anything to offer him, especially with, you know, what's going to happen with the fallout of 
the public figuring out that Stormfront was a Nazi. I'm pretty sure Vought's going to take a pretty huge hit for that, for literally putting a super-powered Nazi into so much power. Well, you know, that's the... I think so, what's interesting is that, like, you know, that's what they kind of been doing in the, in the latter half of season two is, like, when whenever someone gets called out, like, they try to do cover-ups. And, yeah. that, and I think they're going to try to do that again in, you know, season three, because even though technically Stormfront was, like, what, the daughter or the, the wife of the, what's his fault, the, the, per, the Nazi Vought guy who basically founded Vought. Yeah, and, she was the wife. Yeah, she was the wife. And she, and, like, regardless, I mean, like, obviously that's not what Vought represents today. You know, like, they're not, they're not trying to be, Nazi Germany from 1940s. Um, but right. I think really what's going to happen is I think the, a lot of the, the, the soups is what we should call them. Um, the, the soups, uh, a lot of them are going to go rogue and I don't think, and Vought won't be ready for it. And they're going to have to figure out what to do. Um, and I think what's going to be interesting is, you know, the, depending on who goes where and what happens, you know, they might have to basically recreate the seven and essentially they're going to create essentially like a suicide squad of heroes to go take out the rogue ones. Now, I don't know how it will happen or if it will, but definitely like, I think Homelander is going to get to a point where they're going to have to try to contain him more. And I don't think he's ready for that. And that will be a huge plot line. Of I, him. Yeah. yeah. I think pretty much the exact same thing. I think, I think Homelander is going to leave Vought, start his own like renegade squad of superheroes that don't want to be told what to do anymore, and I think they're going to try and you know take over the world. Right, something uh, something along those lines. Because like I I remember when um I you know, before I watched the show, a lot of people were talking about how I think his name's Edgar, who is basically like the new Vought leader. Uh, in some shape or form, he's like the new head honcho after what's her face died. And he, he's kind of basically is like, no, you're like, you're going to listen to me. And if you don't, we're going to screw you over. And I, I think he's going to have a huge play in the season three. Cause like whatever happens with Homelander or whoever might leave, like he's going to essentially be the one that's like, we're going to basically either engineer or find the number two and have them basically hunt down Homelander before he does anything stupid. Because that's the other thing too is Homelander is very angry man. Um, he he has no mercy for anybody. So like if he goes rogue, he essentially he's essentially a monster. And maybe he doesn't go rogue. Maybe we don't know something that they're going to talk about. Maybe that's why he doesn't leave. You know, and then maybe that's like going to be a huge talking point as well because he's going to want to leave, but he can't. You know, something along those lines. So I, I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting. No, yeah, definitely. I'm really excited to see what they do. What I really hope they end up doing is if they don't get the entire, you know, squad back together, which I'm not sure I'd even want. I'd really I really don't want to see Mother's Milk back in the in the squad. I'd like to see Frenchie come back. Oh yeah, I but, think Frenchie like, will come back. I would I would be really upset if MM joined the joined the boys again because I I feel like his whole storyline's complete. He doesn't he didn't really have a reason to be in the boys in the first place rather than to help Butcher. And then right. he just got stuck. But now that, you know, he's been pardoned, I don't see why he'd come back and help at this point. No, especially because, like, his whole thing is, like, uh, so M.M., a.k.a. Mother's Milk, um, he, uh, he basically used to work with Butcher. And then, like, he, Butcher asked him back on for this journey. And, like, M.M. had a family. And essentially, he basically had to leave his family behind in order to protect them. And part of that was like, oh, if they, if they were able to find a way to screw Vought over, which they ended up doing by the end of season two a little bit, he was able to basically reunite with his family and basically get put under, you know, um, oh, God, what is it? Maybe not undercover, but uh, the whatever, whatever you have to do to change your name. I forget what that process is. I'm not a smart human being. Um, yeah, I forget. But, uh, it yeah, but the thing it. is, is like, um, like, yeah, you're right. His storyline's complete. So, like, him coming back, there has to be some big thing. Because, like, his storyline was, I am doing this to get back to my family. Like, that's it. And he got back to his family. 
Um, even even to like some extent, like because uh, Frenchie was trying to be like this father figure to the the girl that they found. Yeah, and um, that's essentially like a crazy X twenty three, and um, that sort of storyline kind of got resolved too because her storyline is also got resolved because she basically wanted to reunite with her brother. Her brother got brutalized in front of her and now she kind of got what she wanted and she's good. So like, I don't like the only characters that really kind of have open storylines right now are Huey and butcher. Um, and I don't know. I don't know where they're going to go. Like Huey will be interesting because Huey's going to be working at like a reporting place, which is with another character. We haven't really discussed a lot yet. Um, so I don't know how that's going to go down. Um, but really I just don't know where butcher's going to end up. Like, you know, is he just going to become like some bounty for hire? You know, whatever. I I don't know. You know, I really don't. I'd like to see he's him. The, he's like, the one I'm the most like. I don't know. Like, I really don't. I would I would love to see Butcher take on being a father. You know, he like however unlikely that is. I would love to see him like trying to parent somebody. Like his reaction to like his kid doing something he didn't want to happen or like, I guess, I guess now he's like sworn to protect the kid now. Right. So like, I, I would be really interested in seeing him like trying to muster up the courage to, you know, fight for something he doesn't believe in because you know, that, that was the big, that was sort of his big arc was him coming around and he didn't really come around i i don't think he actually came around to protecting his wife's kid i yeah, think no, yeah i think he i think what he thinks he did was a one-time favor like he he gave the kid to uh what's her name I can't remember her name. Uh, I got the cat. I got the cast list pulled up right now, so I can the I can, the can, old lady, the blonde lady. Uh, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to find her. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, oh, I, that's I don't remember. Is that what her name is? Is it January? January? Yeah, I think so. I I think I might have got the right person. Um, I could be completely wrong. So someone, someone will tell me if I'm, I'm wrong otherwise. Cause she's the one that essentially took over for, uh, uh, was it Rainer? Oh no, no, no. Yeah. Rainer. I am. talking. No, 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 not Rainer. No, she took Rainer over. Was, she didn't take over, but Rainer was the one that died, right? Rainer's the one that died. And then right after Rainer died, they went to. I think January is that her name? Yeah, because January really was name? above her, I believe. But like, she essentially took over the role as Rainer for season two. Because okay, that's what yeah. that's Rainer was that role in season one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I, what I'm worried is I think that Butcher probably sees him giving his giving the kid to January as like, you know, all done with. You know, like he he no longer has to really worry about the kid because January has him and he knows that January will take care of him. Right. So I I think that some sort of incident might happen with the kid where, you know, he through through his pride is going to be thrusted back into battle. And I don't know how how he's going to sort of go about it. I don't know if his views on soups have changed yet. I would love to see a super powered Butch. I think that would be freaking awesome. Like Butcher with laser eyes or he can fly or whatever. Like that would be crazy. I would really hope. So you want God really of War is it. what you're telling me. You want God of War PlayStation 4. So Butcher becomes Kratos. Yes. And he just one by one brutalizes all of these superheroes. And then at the end, just does like a Pandora's box, like destroys the world. Oh, that's 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 funny. I, I would I, love to see that. Honestly, what's funny is that's what I thought of the whole time is that Butcher essentially is Kratos. Like, if we're being honest, he's just he's a very angry man that is angry about like. So like with Kratos, this whole thing is like the like, you know, you know, Ares basically made him accidentally kill his wife and child. And with Butcher, it's like Vought basically took away his wife, which is essentially all he cared about. So he's just on this giant vengeance quest to get re revenge. 
and then the process is able to basically get back to his wife, but then she dies. Um, but I think the difference here though is like, you know, I do think that's what's gonna happen. I think something's gonna happen with January with the kid. Kid's gonna have to go back in custody with Butcher. Um, you know, maybe they're they'll do something where like, oh, Butcher stole the child, so he's like a target again, um, in some shape or form, but that's not really the case. But He'll be yeah. he'll be involved with the seven again with though because I do think what will happen is in that you know connection, Homelander is going to find out that his son is back out for him to basically try to take custody of again, and Homelander is going to kind of have a a square off against Butcher like an actual square off, and I and I and another thing I forgot to mention this with Homelander I do think one of the things we'll figure out in season three is what the weaknesses of Homelander. That is one of the things we'll th- we'll find out. For sure. You know what? I I kind of hope that he doesn't have like a kryptonite. Like I think that, that would be really really lame if he ends up having like this all destroying weakness that the boys can find and abuse. I I don't think I, that will be it. I don't think he'll. I don't think they'll do it like that. I think um, you know um, you know it's like uh they tell they talk about how when you want to write a good Superman story, you need to make it about how, you know, even though Superman is basically this immortal human being, like, he just can't save everybody. I think they'll do something along those lines with, like, they'll make something matter to Homelander to the point where it destroys him. And that's what gets him. Um, yeah, I was kind of thinking do. that that's what Stormfront would end up doing. Because when, when their relationship first started, I was like, oh, Stormfront's going to try and utterly dehumanize and destroy homelander the only way that's really possible and that's through his emotions because like physically he's indestructible for what we know like yeah like there's there's been no weakness that's been discovered and and i think i think we learn the truth that like Vought doesn't even know what his weakness is yeah they they might not know they Um, might not know i would be surprised if he doesn't have one but i would really hope that it wouldn't be like a I would really hope that if he does have a weakness, it doesn't end up being like a DC movie where like it becomes a mission or like it becomes a quest for this specific item. And then there's this big giant fight with lasers at the end of the series. And and it's like, oh, the unseemingly powerful character Huey gets a hold of the item and at just the right moment strikes and defeats the big bad guy. I really hope I don't think they'll do that. I uh I don't think they will. Um, I would be surprised if they do that because the way that they've started this story and the way that the story's been written is very grounded in a realistic way. Like there's no real definite beginning or end to any of these storylines. They sort of gradually ramp up as it goes along. Like uh, like the the inciting incident. Yeah, Huey's girlfriend was killed, but. She was killed because A Train had been doping on drugs for like forever, and he was just on a massive trip when he ran straight through Huey's girlfriend. So, like to Huey, it was like an inciting incident, and it was, and it's sort of a cliche, but like in in the scope of the story, it wasn't like, oh, A Train was an evil person and one day he was running and didn't step out of the and like didn't step aside when he saw that a random girl was standing where he was going to be running right it was you know he he had a genuine reason like yeah he's not a good guy but he didn't do it because he's evil the only person that really does stuff because they're evil is homelander essentially because he's the only one that has anything to gain from being evil like even edgar Edgar is probably the second most evil person I would say in the show. I I agree. Aside from Stormfront, obviously, but Edgar, you know, at the very least, he's not doing stuff to be evil. He's doing stuff because all he cares about is money and getting that bottom line. Yeah, it's a, it's like the same thing with Madeline. Like, but basically, basically, kind of the the running thing I've noticed with the show is that like with with the two seasons so far, so like. Matt was it um Madeline essentially it what used to be essentially that figurehead of like the company a little bit, but then yeah. she dies. Um and then she gets replaced by Edgar, although I think their positions are different. They might be the same, but yeah, the, so still, Edgar like, 
Edgar was always the CEO, and Madeline Stillwell was, I think, VP or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then it's just like, and because that's the same thing with um, what is it with uh, January where she basically replaced um Rainer. That's essentially what happened. So like, yeah. I feel like in season. In season three, we might get a more evolution at Edgar because I don't think we got enough of him in season two, although he kind of still replaced that role. Um, I think we'll see more of him in season three. And I think like my I think something's gonna happen with January with the kid, and then Butcher's gonna have to take custody of the kid in some shape or form, you know, secretly and so and, and somehow, and then that will be a big thing. Um yeah, no, or at, at the very least, I hope that's how it goes down. I, I hope that the writing stays consistent. So far, it has been. Like yeah. they took a they took a year off from season one to season two, and the writing stayed pretty much consistent. I would say season one is better than season two. I would say season two takes more risks than season one does. I agree. Um, but in terms of like the best season, I would say season one is better than season two. Just just because. You know, like, especially when you when I'm thinking about Homelander and what he does, like we learn we obviously we learn a ton about all the characters in that one because we're being introduced to them. But like Homelander acts the most like Homelander does in season in season one, because in season two, you know, he's dating Stormfront. So he's being emasculated by her without him even knowing it or out it without it even being pointed out because. In the first one, we see him like selfishly destroy an airplane the second it becomes inconvenient to him. Uh, but you know, when he's inconvenienced in season two, like when uh, Stormfront lies to him and says, like, "Oh, I'm going to be in a meeting in Vought Tower," and the, but she's actually going to the hospital. You know, he doesn't he doesn't lash out. He, I, I guess he does. I mean, he destroys like the set that they were working on. But he doesn't kill anybody. Like right. Homelander from season one would have would have found out where Stormfront was and attacked. Yeah. In some way. Uh, and and I'm excited to see uh, Homelander completely lose his mind because he's been I, and I sort think that's of what there. We're see. He's been sort of there for the most part from season one and two. Like he has some empathy and he has some reason. I don't think he's going to have any reason after what happened. Well, you kind of see that at the end of season two, because that's essentially what the whole cabin is. Yeah. You know what I mean? The cabin is this like escape of reality for him to kind of go crazy. And, yeah, and, and I think it was more of rage finding out that the thing he cares of most, Vought, is actively trying to go against him. Like right. actively, like Vought had organized a deal to steal his son. Exactly. With the with his enemy, so now that he knows that Va is out to like is against him, I don't know if there's anything left for him to do but lash out. And I think that that's what he's going to spend the majority of season three doing. And I'm excited yeah. to see that. Yeah, I'm excited. Do you think uh, what do you think we're going to see any like brand spanking new characters? Because like really, our brand new characters we really got in season two where Edgar and Stormfront. Do you think we're going to see anyone along I those hope, lines? I hope we see more of the like the the older characters. I hope we get introduced to Soldier Boy. I don't know if you've you've picked it up cuz he's sort of been in the background, but Soldier Boy was like the first superhero. I hope right. we get at least some backstory for him. Um cuz I think I think like seeing this this universe's version of a world war ii captain america especially in light of you know how stormfront was treated i would love to see how they have uh how they do this soldier boy character that we haven't seen i also hope to see an iron man parody i think that would be awesome that would be pretty funny I'm not going to lie. That'd be pretty interesting to see. With, with how they did the Batman parody, which his name is... What's what's Batman's parody? That's... Uh, is it Black Noir? Black Noir. I love... Also, can I just say the fact that Black his weakness Noir. is the fact he's allergic to nuts is hilarious? I, 
I, I was sort of I was sort of peeved, you know, because I felt like I felt like at when when Black Noir was about to kill Starlight. Right. I I felt like, oh, well, they got to write themselves out of this hole because they're not going to kill Starlight. Starlight's arc hasn't even like halfway completed by that. Point. It hasn't. Yeah, like, it hasn't completed yet. I was like, they're not going to kill Starlight because she has too much she needs to do. And I was like, they're going to write themselves out of this hole. And then Maeve comes out of literally nowhere, like literally nowhere, and shoves a candy bar in Black Noir's mouth. Without Black Noir even, like, giving her any attention, like, totally, totally, you know, ignoring everything Maeve's doing, even though she's, like, ripping his helmet off, which, from what I understand from the story that they've been telling us about Black Noir, is that he doesn't talk at all. He's very seclusive and very secretive about hiding his skin, and he's never outside of his suit because not even Homelander knows what he is in terms of race. Like when they were when uh, Homelander and Maeve were being interviewed on that news station, I forgot about that. I forgot like, about that line. Seventy some percent of superheroes are white. Too. Yeah, he's like seventy some percent of superheroes are white and he starts like listing off the demographics for the seven and he's like we don't even know what black noir is and then he's also like and Maeve is gay yeah i, I remember that I, oh I i'm excited to see i'm i i really hope to see an iron man parody i hope to see a spider-man parody i think that would be hilarious um you know we've seen some x-men but i would love to see a the thing or the oh Hulk. yeah, I agree. I That'd be the parodies of those guys. I really hope, I really hope they've saved those superpowers for the boys. I hope the boys get superpowers. Um, you know, I think the congresswoman that can explode people's heads. I think she has a posse of superheroes working with her, because I don't know. I know for a fact she's working with Vought. There's no other reason for her to do any of the things that she did. Is she though? It, well, she? so, so here's here's my theory about about her. I can't remember her name. I'm not going to be bothered. I'm just going to call her the congresswoman. Okay. So the congresswoman, obviously, she's the one who did the attack uh, during the court meeting where the lead scientist was going to speak out against Vought. Obviously, she's the one who did that. Um, if she was working with Vought. Why would she kill people? Or if she wasn't working with Vought, why wouldn't she kill Homelander? Homelander has been the thing that she's attacked the most as a congresswoman. And that's what she, that's like sort of her stance, at least when she was meeting with the boys, was like, we got to get Homelander. Right. So like if she wasn't working with Vought, what motivation do, does she have? To not only kill the scientist, but also to not kill Homelander or Stormfront That's true. or any other and seven. If she keeps them happy, she essentially I mean, like, she keeps her job, she keeps her quota, you know. Right. Right. And I think I think what I think Vought deployed her to be a congresswoman, so Vought controls both sides of the conversation. So That's they really can have they can have her sort of target things that Vought can like prepare for in advance. So like I I think the only sort of like discrepancy with that was when Homelander was caught killing an innocent person. She was uh leading a protest in front of Vought Tower. I I I argue I I you know switch sides with myself every now and again because I think like oh she's just doing that uh save face but then at other times I'm like you know, Congress people don't have to go out of their way to host protests. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that we'll, we'll probably get like an idea, a uh, deep dive into the season three is the more political scope. We got a little bit of it with season two with the whole like, or even a little bit of season one, then when they were trying to get like the government buy in for the military. Mm -hmm. But I think there's going to like, there'll probably be some spoof on like the president and like a little bit more of the political scope because obviously you know if we get this whole thing of homelander going crazy 
and he he's out of Vought, and now he's just kind of this rogue madman, like flying around the world doing heinous stuff just because he's angry and his legs blowing stuff up. Obviously, the president's going to have to get involved, so we'll probably have him be a character. And I think that'll be an interesting way to because we've only seen we've only seen the show from like the company business side interacting with the the government a little bit. We haven't seen it go full scope of like how entertainment interacts with how the government works. You know, you know, we both are in technology and like one of the biggest things that we do that's kind of involved with the government is how the whole internet structure of the United States works. Where essentially yeah. the government does have a little bit of say and how that's all regulated. So the companies regulate it in the ways that they can to make the most money, you know, based off of that. So there, I think there's some interesting conversations to probably have in that space. And honestly, I don't want to go on a political tangent on the show, but, um, <laughs> but I mean, like, that's honestly a thing that can be talked about is like, how does, you know, how does the writing staff want to portray the way that United States politics would treat this you know and, we yeah, don't know and i do want to say like we don't have to make that conversation because at the end of season two the show very clearly makes that conversation for us you yeah, know it with, does they, they drop quips like uh one of the senators touts off make america great again and like there's a bunch of make america safe again posters and even stormfront is very clearly like at the beginning of the end of season two you know, she's going on this tangent, like we're following this guy who's like not watching nothing but Stormfront propaganda and it drives himself crazy. But, you know, during her like during during her speech that this guy is watching, she draws very clear lines between what's going on in the show and what's going on in real world politics today. Right. You know, Which I, Stormfront I do, I do think a, that'll be interesting. As, sure. a, as a Nazi, Stormfront obviously is very xenophobic, so they, they really hit on sort of the political xenophobia that's going on in today's world and make a very painfully clear message about how that can sort of affect civilians who see that stuff on a daily basis. Yeah. And I now granted, you know, the way that they perceive it is, you know, she's a Nazi and we've all kind of. We all have an agreement that Nazis are bad. Um, not but, good. You know, yes. Yeah, not good. They're not, they <laughs> that that idea no good. Um, but I mean, <laughs> I think they'll. I, I mean, we joke about it, but like, I think they'll make an even stronger point about that. You know, going not necessarily the Nazi stuff, but like going into season three, because I I think especially you know the whole if Homelander goes insane, leaves fought, people are scared. I think there will be a giant, you know cry from the human population of fear and how they want to ban all soups which honestly i think would be a very interesting take because one of my you know you know two of my favorite storylines from marvel comics are civil war the original civil war not the movie civil war um and basically almost all of the classic x-men from like the 90s because both yeah. of these topics really definitely go around this idea of people being scared of someone that's different than them and the and especially specifically in Civil War, they actually talk about how the government gets involved with that, um, and how that kind of takes a huge part. And I do think that will be interesting to see how they handle that. Um, even if we want to, you know, relating back to the previous episode uh, when Miranda and I were talking about Detroit Become Human, you know, if you have played Detroit and you know how the ending of that game works, uh, the ending of that game is essentially they're calling all of the androids. So, like, are they going to do some type of thing if, like, if all if since the soups are these science experiments, which we haven't even talked about on this podcast, the fact that basically every superhero is just a, a science experiment, um, not actually born and raised as a superhero, um, like, are they going to do something about containing all the superheroes, which we kind of already saw a little bit of that um, in yeah. the, the testing lab place. So, yeah. there, I think there's a lot of interesting routes that they can take. And I honestly, it's kind of all based off of how Homelander reacts. And it's kind of funny that we're talking about this because when I pulled up the cast listing, um, apparently they have, they possibly have the first episode of season three either written or the title got leaked. And the title is called Payback. So, oh, yeah. I think, I think we're going to sit in Homelander's seat for most of season three. 
because mm-hmm. Homelander took a massive backseat in this in the in this latest season. So I, yeah. I really think we're gonna see a lot of Homelander this upcoming season. So I wouldn't be surprised if that title is from the perspective of Homelander, because out of all he's the characters, really the only, yeah, out of all the, the characters, one. he's the one who really wants payback now. Yeah, because he, I mean, he lost Stormfront. Uh, Maeve basically blackmailed him for him getting his ultimate revenge. He's under, he's under the heels of Vought right now. Um, he doesn't have a son that he wants to raise. Um, he basically, he's, he's against the world right now. And the only other character that you can maybe even tie that to a little bit is Butcher. But it, I mean, at the end of season two, it's clear that he's like, at least what we saw, like, he doesn't want to go on this angry revenge fest anymore. At least what we've seen. Like, he yeah. doesn't, yeah, that, that part of him's gone. So, um, but we know he's going to be involved with whatever happens. Like, Butcher is definitely one of the ma- major characters of the story. So, um, I, I'm very, cur- I'm very curious to see, um, how the show goes. I'm actually actively like super excited to watch this, like as the episodes go live now, like oh, I'm yeah. super stoked. Um, cause I did not get to do that. I actually binged the entire show within like three days. So <laughs> I, uh, which is insane. I never do that. Like I, I mean, no one knows I've talked about them to him plenty of times. So I'm not really a TV person. Yeah. And like, this is the only other time I ever done this is with Wilfred. Wilfred was the only other show I did this because Wilfred is also a very dark, cynical show that kind of deals with a lot of similar themes, but I would say in a more lighthearted way because the boys definitely take this in a interesting very, direction. Very dark direction, I would yeah, say. Yeah, very, very dark, dark direction. I love but Honestly, it. you know, and I know uh, Noah and I talked about this off um, the show, but one of the reasons why I think I really like this is that one of my, abs- my absolute favorite story from comic books of all time is Watchmen. Um, because Watchmen at the time was essentially that sort of realistic take on the superhero concept. And, yeah. and now granted, it does not satire as hard as this show does, but that was kind of the Watchmen's whole gimmick was it was a much darker, grittier version of the superhero, you know, lifestyle and show and characters and everything. And I, you know, this is the closest that I think we've been able to capture Watchmen. Um, but even taking it in a more realistic direction. And I very much like that. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes with the future episodes. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally on your side with that. I, I feel like Watchmen, Watchmen was necessary to make the boys possible. Yes. Obviously the boys takes a lot of notes from, from Watchmen at, at least in the show. I haven't read the comics, but the, the show drives heavily from the tone of Watchmen and it is it's fantastic cuz i mean if you've watched Watchmen you you know what i mean yeah yeah absolutely um no yeah it's 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 like the one dc product that i actually enjoy um besides batman um <laughs> which is really funny to, and i always forget too that like as you know my marvel is my my jam but like my favorite story from comics is Watchmen and that is a dc thing and it's funny that we talk about how the DC cinematic universe is like the gritty dark stuff. And like, I'm like, have you guys not seen or you guys not seen or our red Watchmen? Like Watchmen was doing it a long time ago um, yeah. before anyone else was doing it. Um, but yeah, no, I I'm super excited about the about the the future of the series. Um, and the fact that it's on Amazon is super funny to me. Like the fact you have to watch this on Amazon video. I think it's hilarious. Like, it's it's kind of tone deaf, but yeah, no, it is hilarious. Yeah, no, because it's like you're talking about how it's like you went through Netflix and Hulu, and then you went to Amazon Video, and you're like, oh, well, I guess this one Amazon show. Because I've only watched one other series on Amazon, and I forget what it's called, but it stars a famous female comedian um, who, she she's a lesbian, and she basically, she goes back home to Mississippi, and she's basically like living at home in Mississippi doing like a radio show. And it's like the whole kind of idea of like her going back home to this very, without going into it too detail, but Mississippi, you know, the, the, the lesbian star, you can kind of figure out the stuff that goes there. Um, but it was, it was a very interesting show. And sadly it got ruined because it was actually ran by Louis CK's production company before Louis CK, uh, became not a necessarily liked figure in the world. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, that was the only other show I ever watched on Amazon and like nothing else 
ever appeal to me when I heard like stuff. And this was the first thing I was interested in. And then like you told me to watch it. And then like every podcaster that I follow was like, uh, ad we're, we're watching the boys. It's really good. And I'm like, what, how does that work? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, well it's because it's good. So, um, yeah, no, they, they definitely spent a fortune on advertising this year. Cause I was know. seeing stuff for the boys all over the place when it was coming out. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame them. It's a really good show. I mean, like the fact that we're actually spending time to talk about this on a podcast is, is, is pretty good. Uh, cool. And I, and honestly, I will definitely, I'm definitely going to have you back on one season three airs in completion. So we could do another one of these where we can talk completely about season three of the boys. Cause I am so stoked to watch it. And just I'm like, very excited, especially cause like, especially, you know, with the climate of this year and possibly maybe a little bit of next year and like some of the stuff that's happened within movies and media, like I'm curious what they might do if they're going to spoof any of that based off that stuff. But I don't I'm know. I'm pretty sure they are. Cause at, at least with Stormfront, Stormfront was spoofing a lot of very current day stuff. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely true. And, and really with this stuff being written, like the, the episodes are being written right now. So right. I would be surprised. I'd be surprised if they finish writing before the election's over. I think a lot of what they put into season three is going to be dependent on this election. That I will also, not be surprised if if that would be the case. That is also a true statement. I I can especially like when we're talking about the political landscape, probably for season three. I think that will take a huge part of how that nets out and how they're going to write those characters and stuff like that, or what those characters are going to directly mean. You know, like, I think that will be a huge part because, I mean, that's another thing that's great about the show is that it actually deals with a lot of realistic ideas and stuff like, um, like Huey's like whole PTSD thing that he has. Like, mm -hmm. I think and the anxiety, like, I think, you know, that relates to a ton of people. And like, you actually like they do a very good job of telling that and showing how that affects Huey in these in like very close call situations of almost basically dying, you know, like. I think it's done, handled very well and not in a um, d um, bad manner. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, they do a very good job. Very good job. Yeah. But I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Um, this has been fantastic. Thank you, Noah, for joining me on this. Um, yeah. This has been yeah. a blast. I, I love talking about the boys, so I'm glad yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's the, it's the <laughs> Spider-Man meme of all the, the Sinister Six and it's like me and the boys or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, thank you. I mean, like, um, I, I appreciate... I, first off, I have to say thank you for not only joining me on today, but also actually basically, you know introducing me to watching the show i knew what it was but you were kind of one of the big instigators of me like waking like not waking up but like right before i went to bed like just booting it up on amazon and i basically watched like three episodes that night not <laughs> caring about wh when i had to wake up the next morning um so but uh i want to thank you for that because this is one of my new favorite things one of the highlights of 2020 of yeah you're you know, welcome yeah share the wealth you. right yeah no exactly and i strongly recommend if you have prime Watch the show. If you like superheroes, if you like, if you if you like that type of stuff, if you like satires, I think this is going to do like a lot of people a giant breath of fresh air. If you are kind of tired of the superhero format, um, I think this is great. So strongly recommend you folks watch it. This is not a sponsored ad. <laughs> this is just us all liking this, the liking the show. Man, um, I wish it was sponsored. Amazon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, hashtag sponsored. We are sponsored by the air. The air that we breathe is very good for you. Um, so breathe it. <laughs> um, but all right, everyone. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the show. Until then, thank you all for tuning in. And until next time, when we bring some new, unique perspectives and ideas to the table. I'll see you all later.